Alright, hello everyone, welcome to my channel again. I know I haven't made a video in a while, but don't worry, I've been kept busy with reenactments so far. Um, just wanted to show you guys what I have for the upcoming event in March. Uh, it's going to be in about a few days. And I'm just going to go over some of the gear here. Um, some of the, for a German soldier of World War One, what they would have, you know, carried with them. Um, so, first of all, we should start with the tunic. This is a 1907 infantry tunic. It has brass buttons on it that were dulled. And um, we got the shoulder boards here for the regiment. Fifth company, which is indicated by the button, uh, IR-23 von Winterfeld. And then we have um, yellow piping, which they would later remove, but um, I don't have any other shoulder boards, so. Here we got a belt buckle, which um, has the Prussian Eagle on it, in brass. Um, they would later um, make this out of, you know, zinc alloy or even steel. Um, just non-war, um, war sustainable materials. Um, then we got some stamps here, so we got 2nd Battalion, 5th Company, IR-23, Bekleidungsamt 6, uh, 1915, which is actually Army Depot 6, which, if I believe, if I remember correctly here, uh, that would be in Breslau, which is now modern-day Poland, so it doesn't exist anymore. Was Prussia, well, not anymore, of course. Um, here we've got a field flask uh, M15, um, and it has got a more simplified stopper made of cork, um, a leather band to hold it all together, corduroy, uh, um, a corduroy uh, cover, and then I try to put some stamps here as well. Of course, it doesn't work very well. We got a 1907. Um, uh, canteen or Feldfasche, which literally means field flasks. So it's not really canteen, it's more like field flask. Brass buttons here, again, would later be changed. Uh, made of aluminium, also again, would later be changed to this. Um, the event that we'll be having will be taking place in 1916, so you do sometimes still see some things around like aluminium bottles, uh, but they were phasing out slowly but surely. Here we have bayonet. A 1905 butcher bayonet, or it's actually called a sight and gewehr, which literally means side arm. Uh, 9805. And um, it's got a sash here, which indicates the company. This is actually for the second company. I'm the fifth. I'm getting a fifth company sash, so don't worry about that. Got the bayonet sheath, pretty self explanatory. Alright, so actually, I took it out of the sheet, and here you can see. It's a big, big, big blade. It looks more like a machete than it does a bayonet. And it is dated, if the camera will focus, it says there, the W stands for Wilhelm, which was the Kaiser, the Emperor. And 16 means the year it was made in. And then this is a proving stamp of whoever um, said, yep, these can go to the front line. Um, especially during the winter, you want to keep warm. So I got some woolen socks here, um, made of natural wool. I got some um, cutlery here, so a big spoon, um, another big spoon, and a big fork. Over here we got a cast iron pan and a cast iron um, cooking pan. So that's nice. Um, over here we have, um, here I got my GoPro in. Um, but it's in a period correct little bundle, so no one notices it. I got some instant coffee in this one. And then here I got some more canned food. I got I got more, but that I think that's enough to be uh, sitting on the table. Got the 1909 Patrona Tasha, which means basically ammo pouches. Very pretty simple. They were dyed black in 1915 after a general order by the Emperor. And um, yeah, they hold basically Three stripper, stripper clips, so that's like 15 rounds each. Um, and the soldiers would also have more uh, ammo stored in their um, tornister or knapsack. Uh, 
So here we got some Fußlappen, which are actually called feet feet sheets, I guess you can call them. Uh, they're meant to you meant to wrap these uh, foot wraps. There we go. You meant to wrap these around your feet if you're too cold, um, like during the night or whatever during the winter. Um, these are just surplus from Eastern Europe. I, you know, they're just pre they're pretty simple. Um, and we got a Pioneer's axe here. It is actually a Dutch axe from the 1930s from the Dutch Army of the Engineers Department, but it is identical. And I will post a picture up here um, where you can see that it is basically identical to the German model. Next up, we got a spade. It's an 1898 spade. Um, it's pretty light, actually, surprisingly. Um, it's made of pretty thin steel. And um, yeah, just a good overall little spade to dig some entrenchments with. Also, of course, in the war, you cannot forget, of course, that you need some light during the night. So I got this little um, oil lamp here, um, which is pretty cool. Nice little nifty thing. Um, over here we got some bandages. Yeah, actually, a soldier would always carry two bandages with him. And it would actually have them stored here in the front flaps of the tunic. Uh, they would be sewn in here, and when the soldier you know, had to get them out, they just ripped them out. Um, that one is a little bit, you know, dinked, but that's okay. I still got this one. Um, a soldier would... Um, basically carry two of these, because if he needed to help a comrade, or himself, uh, a bullet wound, what does a bullet wound do? Well, it goes in, of course, one end, and goes out the other. So, you need two bandages to stop the bleeding on both ends, you know, if that happened, if you got shot right through the chest, or arm, or leg, or whatever. Um, and there's actually a bandage inside of here, I just, I'm not gonna un unwrap it, because it's not necessary, because we're not actually shooting at each other at a reenactment. That'll be today. Talking about lamps, I got a little oil, or a oil, I got a little uh, candle lamp here as well. Um, this is also an Ubatsuk or cover, but this is a very early one. I just wanted to show this in contrast with the later one, which is the field gray one. And, uh, you know, this is the Pico Alba. Pretty, again, pretty self-explanatory spiked helmet. These are pretty um, infamous, I guess, you know. When you show this to someone, they immediately think, oh yeah, the Germans. Stamps again in there. Um, you know, just made of boiled leather. Um, <clears throat> here's another one. Here's a pretty much an early war example. Uh, all the brass fittings, the brass um, coat of arms. Every, pretty much every state and every um, kingdom in the empire, because it was more of a confederacy of kingdoms and states and duchies and free cities. Um, it was way less uniform than we tend to think the German empire was, but, um, every, everyone basically had their own little, um, so Prussia had this little, uh, coat of arms and, for instance, Bavaria had, like, uh, one with a lion and Wurttemberg had, like, one with a, with an elk, you know, um, I'll put some pictures up here so you can see what I'm talking about because it's way too long to explain out of everything. So, um, got some field gray trousers here. These are uh, with red piping, indicates that they're infantry. Um, got some uh, suspenders here, pretty common. A mess kit, a 1915, 1915 mess kit. This is actually a political mess kit, like a political late. Um, post-war mess kit, but it's almost identical to the M15, so that's why I'm using it, so before somebody comes, calls me out here, you know. And then we got the little field cup, and um, this would hold, you know, literally a quarter of a liter, and you would, you know, drink coffee out of this, or, you know, water. Field cap again, also for the infantry. Pretty much you would wear this if you <clears throat> were, you know, in the trenches, if you were, you know, not in battle or whatever. Although it didn't really matter if you were wearing this or that, because they both don't protect you against shrapnel or bullets. Um, <clears throat> I've got a bread, ba uh, bread bag here, or a Brotbeutel. 
and um, this one is made of ochre canvas. <coughs> they later were made uh, of a sort of gray canvas. I got an undershirt here. Can't really see it very well, but okay. Shovel carrier, also in black. Um, a bread bag strap. And here we have some 1866 um, Tifo or you know, marching boots. And here we actually have some mittens. Uh, pretty simple. Here we have a um, little shawl or scarf. Here we have a balaclava, also for cold weather. Um, you see these on uh, period pictures a lot. And soldiers wearing those, especially in the Eastern Front, where our event is going to take place. You know, I mean, not really the Eastern Front, of course. Um, all right, going over there. Here we have some. I just put this in a Ziploc bag for now. I will just distribute this when I get to the event site. But um, just very simple. We got some dice games. We got some uh, card games, which I will just put away in a better little uh, container because this one is of course very modern. A little pocket wash doesn't work. Um, my soda booth. You know, just all these little itty bitty things. Oh, and there goes everything. Well. Anyway, might as well show you that. You got a guffer, which is a spork, so called. A guffer is actually a conglomerate of luffer and um, gabel, which gabel means um, means spoon, and luffer means uh, fork. So guffer or spork. I uh, got a harmonica here, or a mouth organ. These are also pretty common to see with soldiers because they would sit in the trenches or, you know, when they were out of combat, which was a lot of the times, so actually. It was a lot of waiting, a lot of waiting on the enemy to show up if it will focus. And they would play the harmonica, play their old tunes. Um, here we got um, the Zeltbahn um, bag, uh, which has ten poles in it. Now, actually, we also got the shelter half here, which is called a Zeltbahn, shelter half, which actually um, you would basically um, go team up with a buddy and then you would you would have another half of the shelter and you would have that half and then you would basically set up, you know, a two-person tent. Now, of course, you've all seen this in the background. These are two Gewehr 98s. This has a repro stock on it, but the barrel and shroud and etc. is dated 1915. You can see that on the back. 1915 means it came from, well, on the back. Then you got the Mauser Obendorf Waffenfabrik, and this little crescent moon means it got shipped out to Turkey. You know, pretty, if I can open the bolt, pretty simple, a five round magazine um, bolt action. I mean, you know, it's basically like the K98. It's pretty simple, and this one also got a sling on it. And, uh, yep, that's, that's all I'm bringing to the event, with a few other little things, of course, but, uh, yep, that's about it, so, um, yeah, I guess, uh, take care, and I'll see you later.